Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sawa, Lumada Innovation Evangelist. This is the last session of today. I thought that uh, uh, maybe everybody would go home and then only a few people, but I hope that the many people are connected with me. I hope that I can see how many people are watching me. So thank you very much for staying with us until the end of the session. So today we are going to talk about the uh, what Lumada provides to its client, partners, and then Hitachi. So first of all, let me introduce myself. I am an innovation evangelist, especially for Lumada. But I'm involved in many other things. Um, I'm spending most of the time for Lumada evangelist. I am originally engineer and uh, also working on the cyber security. Also, sometimes I give a talk about the uh, component um, management and also portable skills and, and others. But today, I would like to cover top four technology, management, and a few other things. COVID-19, it is universal language. The pandemic resetted the world. 2020, the world has been disrupted and the uh, style has changed. And I think this is the first time for 25 years. 25 years ago, uh, some of you might not have been uh, born yet, but um, 25 years ago, what happened? So uh, 25 years ago from 2020, and then that was the advent of the internet. 1995. Internet appeared, or I should say that Internet has been open to everyone. 1993, I became an adult, and uh, I was studying the liberal arts, but uh, accidentally, I became an, uh, a programmer. And the uh, financial um, companies, IT subsidiary, I started working there and worked as an engineer. I studied the liberal arts, 1993 so that uh, there was no internet. I couldn't really research anything on the research engine, so I had to read books or ask for other people. So I became an engineer. 1995, the internet was uh, open to everyone, and the world has been really recent. It is almost like a kamikaze in my world. So the world has changed dramatically, and that uh, you can't really compare anything to this. For example, you don't compare the fax machine to email or chat. So uh, I, I don't think that anybody communicate with others with fax machine. And uh, after the advent of the internet, the world has changed and you cannot go back. And uh, this is a retrospective type of uh, uh, changes. So what about the impact of the COVID-19? The world became immobile. You can't really move anymore. And so many people were influenced by this. So the, in this uh, world, people still found a way. What was it? That was a data communication. So uh, thanks to the internet technology, the people had to communicate under this lockdown situation. And I think I was thankful so that the business had kept going. And also people can work from home. I'm sure that many of you have uh, done uh, this work from home for the first time, but now it became almost known. 2020 was the first year for the work from home work style. And even at Hitachi, that the many people stayed home and kept working from home. So that was 2020. And I joined the company during that time. So staying 
at office and working are separated. And many people, for the first time, recognized that the uh, staying at the office doesn't mean that you are working. So how do we think of this? The digital technologies have become the real infrastructure of the people. So infrastructure used to be like a utility or transportation platform, but now digital technologies are the infrastructure. It is a given, and also everybody can use it. So that uh, changed the overall lifestyle. Many people, I'm sure that people are watching this online, and uh, they are all accustomed to this, but many people can do shopping online, and you are buying things online, but it is not really a shopping. Uh, this is the e-commerce shop, and when you click it, then the shoes don't come to your house. You have to select the color, size, and at the end, you really have to put your credit card number, then click it. Yet, what you have is that the uh, mail, it says that you have completed. Maybe JPEG is there, but uh, it's showing that you have completed the shopping. So it is, it is so dangerous that you are putting the uh, number of a credit, co credit card. So what are you buying? You are buying the content. So let me go into detail a little bit more. Let's say if you find a new restaurant, but nobody would go into that restaurant right away. When you find a new restaurant, what do you do? It's in front of you, but you take out your smartphone and start searching about this restaurant. So uh, now this is a restaurant moved from the other one, and it seems like uh, maybe uh, you can enjoy this, and uh, you have to get the information first, then go into the restaurant. People have evolved. Now, people have become a creature which believes in data. So when you believe in data, many interesting takes place. For example, this is Apollo um, moon landing. So the essential things for the Apollo program was the absolute simulation. And after the absolute simulation, now you can believe that you can land on the march. So it cannot be the one-way ticket. You have to come back so that uh, you never been to a moon yet with the simulation. Now you can prove that you can go and also back. So unless you believe in data, you cannot really launch the rocket. When you are not confident, maybe Mr. Armstrong, maybe you can uh, be on in a rocket, well, you can't do it. So thorough simulations are necessary, and you have to trust this data. That is why you can launch this rocket, and you can go to the moon. And the Apollo actually was involved in an accident, and they didn't know if they could come back to the Earth. Real-time simulations were conducted thoroughly that time, and data was exchanged, and then they identified uh, the way to come back, and that is why they could come back. The key word here is digital twin. Digital twin means physical entities and data exist at the same time. So you have physical entities doing something, and in the digital world, you can reproduce what's happening. I went to an F1 a race, and right now, this is a digital twin world. McLaren, um, I, I went to a person who knows McLaren, and he's from the UK, and they are connected to the UK, and the data of the driving was analyzed at the same time as the racing in the UK. So this is remarkable. We have an extended world now, and this keyword came to me at that time. I used to be the Microsoft Technology Center director before. And in 2020, August, I quit the company, and I didn't have anything to do. I didn't change jobs. And as people used to say that, oh, you don't have a job right now. And there is something very interesting, Hitachi. And I said, Hitachi, OK, I can do it. And then everyone asked me, why Hitachi? Why did you join Hitachi? 
Well, I thought Hitachi was similar to Microsoft. And Hitachi has all sorts of things. That was very interesting for me. And this depict that situation. This is called Rakuchu Rakugaetsu, a traditional Japanese painting. And, and when you look at this, you see a lot of new technologies depicted. This is a motif. And this is a reflection of the current technology. Hitachi has all sorts of things, from power plants uh, to a nose hair cutter. And they have such a variety of businesses. And to maximize those businesses because of the uh, wide range assets, the keyword here is Lumada, the keyword that brings together the strength of the entire Hitachi group. And so that is why I'm an evangelist. So what is Lumada? Uh, this is a frequently asked question. Why is that? Because a lot of people have these questions because they don't know what actually Lumada is. But Lumada is described in the Michan plan. So this is my job to explain what Lumada is. So from tomorrow, uh, you can be an evangelist uh, to talk about Lumada from tomorrow. And here is uh, something Hitachi employees often say. We have silos in our company. This is, these are silos. Uh, our company is vertically divided like this. So when you have silos in an organization, this is not really a problem. You have silos. Silos themselves are not a problem because when you run an organization, this structure is very convenient. So this structure itself is not a big problem. But when you are vertically divided, it's not a problem per se. But when you have conflicts in between, that's a problem. So siloed organization is not a problem. What is important here is there is no collaboration between the silos. That is a problem. So this is a shirt. You have to pay 100,000 yen to buy this shirt. 100,000 yen? You can buy something very fashionable. The material should be very good. Of course, the shape should be very fashionable. But it's 100,000 yen. But it doesn't really make you fashionable when you just uh, buy this shirt. Well, if you don't uh, just wear anything else, uh, you could be arrested. If you just buy a shirt, it's, it doesn't really make you a fashionable person. A fashionable person is what? They are very good at coordinating. You have the wardrobe, and you know what you have in your wardrobe, and you know what kind of combination makes you fashionable. Those are real fashionable people. That means you need knowledge and experience, and also you need adventure. You need a sense of adventure. And if you have this adventure, you can surprise people and to induce this um, reaction that, oh, we didn't have that idea. I have many fashionable people, and I know a lot of good ideas from those people, and I'm learning from them. And something I notice is that fashionable or not requires a sense. This is not a skill, but you need this sense. So what is this sense? You can polish this sense. So how do you polish this sense? You have to try. You have to have trial and error. You have to combine a lot of different things, and you have to try to polish your sense. And you need this sense of adventure. And then you can brush up your sense more. Without an adventure, well, maybe you have good sense. But when you have this challenging spirit, you can be a more fashionable with a good sense. And Web3, this is another keyword. In one word, what is Web3.0? This is the age of individualism in one word. So how acute you are in the age of individualism. This is a very important mindset, centralized world to distributed world and connected world. So 
this distributed world is something we are going to face, so you have to be ready for that. Hitachi has 370,000 employees in the entire group. This is a big group. The population of Iceland is exactly the same. It's a country, Iceland. So what's different in Hitachi? Everyone is labor force. Everyone is working. There is no baby. So there are so many employees, and there are so many assets in such a wide area. So you need combinations. You need to have a sense of making combinations and coordinating. Innovation is a new combinations, and this is the principle of innovation. Hitachi has a lot of people, and there are a lot of seeds uh, we have yet to encounter. There are so many seeds, so how do we connect all the seeds? How do we uh, make chemical reactions uh, from the encounters? That is what Hitachi is challenging right now. Hitachi is taking on the challenge. And what is important is it's not really about the spirit of challenging. The important thing is data. A lot of divisions make a lot of things, and they generate data. And you have to have trustable data, and human beings have evolved to trust data. And having combinations of data, we can create innovation. So we trust data. So the next thing you have to do just is to combine data. Data and human beings can create the future. In terms of people, in Hitachi, there is a very, very attractive association, alumni association called Henjinkai. Well, this is an association of uh, weird people. I mean, henji means weird people in Japanese, so they changed the Japanese character. So the original culture, the original sense of making this um, association was to utilize weird people. So this is wonderful, and that is why I'm here. I joined Hitachi. Everyone was surprised that I joined Hitachi because I was not really like Hitachi. But that's really the best word I can hear because that means Hitachi changed. Well, Hitachi was really weird before, maybe. Hitachi looks like a very nice and traditional couple, but there are so many strange and weird people. And we do have an ecosystem. A lot of people are involved in this ecosystem. We make, create ecosystem, and we have re reproducible um, things we can create. That should be the future challenge. We have a set. We have human resources. We have a lot of ideas. The next thing is we combine them, and we create an ecosystem. And we run this ecosystem to connect a lot of things. And we need a flag. Lumada is this flag for that. There are so many people getting together to do something, so we need a flag to lead them. So that flag is Lumada. So what is Lumada? Mm -hmm. And I say Lumada is a spirit. Or the Kaji-san who joined me with me, and Lumada is movement, says he. So it's rather a conceptual word, but the massive amount of physical asset and also tremendous amount of data and a huge amount of people. And Hitachi uh, has a culture of integrating many things like let's do it together. So this is co-creation, the key word. So it is not just about the Hitachi internal um, collaboration. Uh, customers, partners, let's create together. That is a mindset of Hitachi. And to materialize that, that you have to have a la flag. And the flag is Lumada, the key word. So what is it for? It is in a one word. Let's create a wonderful future. That is the meaning of Lumada, the wonderful future. Let's create it together with the power of technology. And I think that is the best way. Well, 20 minutes passed so quickly. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much.